I now request the distinguished delegate of Nigeria. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, Madam Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to start this address by congratulating the distinguished delegate of Fiji on her election as the President of General Assembly 71st session. Madam President, the threat to humanity in the 20th century was the world wars that caused a heavy peril to millions of people around the globe. And now, this 21st century has been marked by rising insecurity unleashed by global terrorism and violent extremism. With global increase in the spate of terrorist attacks, now there is more than ever an international consensus and willingness to collaborate in combating this threat. Let me say, terrorism can only be characterized as a flagrant breach of international law. And unfortunately, a fair percent of the member states of United Nations are victims of the same and stands to counter at any rate. Madam President, I would like to bring your attention to the Republic of Nigeria, the country I represent. For the past 14 years, northeastern Nigeria has been ravaged by violent Islamic jihadi group, the Boko Haram. So far, more than 40,000 innocent people were killed by them. Distinguished delegates, you might be aware of the Chibo kidnapping in 2014. Around 276 Nigerian girls were kidnapped by Boko Haram. We were able to rescue 21 out of them with the sincere cooperation of the United Nations recently. And let me express Nigeria's sincere gratitude towards United Nations on behalf of all the people and the victims of Boko Haram. But still, we are continuing our struggle for the release of the remaining. It is an end with their release, their necessities like food, reintegration of healthcare, shelter, psychosocial support should be addressed in order to rehabilitate them, to bring them back to their normal life. Madam President, there exists a large number of reasons that give rise to such militant groups. These may be political, economical, religious, or cultural. So there is a need to consider the underlying condition from which it arises. Ethnic issues, economic imbalances, and non-judicious distribution of resources have to be addressed in a tactful, diplomatic way, and that too, in a holistic, whole-of-society approach. Once it is a reality, we have to get it off it. An interstate cooperation for developing, deploying the forces in, is a necessity as the terrorist movements are extended overseas and are interrelated. You know, Boko Haram is not to be receiving funds from Al Qaeda. Nigeria is of the opinion that armed forces, along with diplomacy, should be adopted so as to get a long term result. Madam President, the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy is a unique move against terrorism, and Nigeria expresses our commitment to implement the strategy as a collective and coordinated response to countering terrorism. And I believe it is the responsibility of each member state to take it forward an integrated and balanced implementation of the four pillar strategy. In this context, I would like to appreciate our member state, India, in dealing with the issue in a coherent way by bringing a drastic change in their economic sector the other day, creating a financial emergency. The currency notes were scrapped in accordance with an aim of exploiting the financial basis of active terrorist groups. Madam President, in the present scenario where the varying militant groups like ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Taliban threatens the existence of mankind, we need to tackle it for the sake of humanity and for coming generation. A united effort of the nation is to be framed under the banner of the UN in order to wipe off the act of terrorism. Moreover, it is necessary to create a society respecting human rights and let the sense of fraternity prevail over the boundaries. Let me conclude. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, delegates.